Divine Truth Training Material Training material generated by Jesus, Mary and others for assorted topics and projects. In the first part of the Introduction to Public Speaking Training, Jesus gives an impromptu introduction on the subject of public speaking and discusses the selection of material, the delivery of material, consideration of the audience, and the emotions related to public speaking, and answers questions from invited guests about the subject. The training was recorded on the 4th of January 2017 from 10 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay, first rule of public speaking is be organized. <laughs> <laughs> And don't do last minute jobs before you get up to speak. <laughs> yeah. So what we wanted to do is because we gave you that task of doing some public speaking next week, and how do you feel about it? You feel a bit nervous, some of you, and don't really know what to do, some of you like. So what we thought we'd do is we'd go through some basic things about how to go about public speaking with you. And um, a lot of it is about um, understanding some sort of what you'd call fundamental principles of public speaking. And if you can do that, then you'll find that you'll be able to put together a presentation. And quite frequently, you can make the presentation last four hours or four minutes using an identical set of materials. And so that uh, is also quite good if you think about it, because it means that no matter how long a public presentation you are preparing, you don't have to prepare all the detail so much as understand the basic schema or the skeleton of what you're going to present. So this is what we want to discuss with you. What to get, how to go about public speaking and what kind of things you've got to be concerned about with regard to public speaking. So the first uh, item I'd like to discuss with you is the flow of the material. So, we, so when we're looking at the material itself, we want to look at the flow of the material. And the flow of the material is all about the logical, sequential presentation of material in order so that you take a audience from a certain position or a certain location into a new location. So that's going to require somehow joining with the audience at the place where they're at and then pulling them through a process into a new place. And in that process, you've got to do a number of things with the audience um, to help the audience sort of see what's going on. So we want to look at your interaction as, as a part of this with the audience. So you can see there's two aspects to it. There's, there's firstly, what material are you going to present and its logical flow. How, how are you going to present this material? And then you've got to look at your audience and you go, go, how can I connect with this audience and share material with that? And then the third uh, aspect we're going to discuss with you is how you go about your delivery. Now, you can see each one of these things means uh, dealing with emotion, doesn't it? obviously, because if you have certain emotional considerations, you're probably not going to be very logical in the way that you prepare your material and the way you prepare your material. If you're really afraid in particular, what you'll finish up doing is preparing a lot of material and, and too much material uh, won't fit often in the time frame that you've got. And so therefore you end up only presenting half of the material in the time frame and so forth. And so you, you finish up running into all of these problems with regard to how much material you have and how the material is logically uh, ordered in, the, in, a w in a way that you can easily cut out things without changing the actual final presentation, if, if, if that's possible. Because you still need to do a number of things with the audience in order to remain connected with them. And as a result of that, you, each one of these things is going to have an effect on the other. So, so what you choose as your material and how much material you choose is going to have an effect on what kind of audience and you know how big the audience is and where they're at and how you deliver to that audience is also going to be affected by the consideration of the audience and the material. So you can see these three things are really all related to each other. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's look firstly though at the material. So I'll bring that across here. 
and we'll start looking at what, what do we need in the material itself. Well, firstly, the first thing we need in the material is a theme. You could say it, the theme is the primary subject of your discussion. That makes sense? So, so, for example, if we're talking about a car, then you could make a theme to be how to drive a car. That might be. Or another theme might be how to repair a car. Or another one might be how to change the tyres on a car. Another one might be how to load the boot effectively. Another one might be how to fill up the car. And there might be all these different subjects, which are all different themes you could make a talk out of if you wanted to. Um, the car being the object of consideration. The theme, though, is, is what aspect of that object con consideration are you trying to get across to your audience? So the theme is of primary consideration. And your theme usually needs to be the very first thing you choose. Unfortunately for most people, what they do is they get a whole heap of material together and they, come, they write it all down and all the different things they want to say, and then, um, then they try to make a theme from all of that, which is the opposite, really the opposite way that you really need to do it. Now, with a theme, that always means that there are going to be main points in the theme. So if we look at what's involved inside of that talk now, there will be main points. So we'll just put these down as and you could say with some main points there might even be and we might just write it a little differently here, sorry, where we might have a sub point under the main point as well. And you might have a couple, but of course the amount of subpoints you can cover in the time you have allotted will be, be quite variable, won't it? If you have a five minute talk then you're probably only going to be able to cover three main points at the most, given that you've probably only got a minute or so to present each main point. So you're highly unlikely going to have a whole heap of subpoints in a talk that's five minutes long. But in a talk that's like four hours long, well, you might be able to make two or three or four or five subpoints per main point. Does that make sense? But you'll have another main point probably. Which could also have, of course, subpoints and possibly another and so forth. So that's your material. What what are the main points that you want to raise? What, what is it you're trying to say to your audience? What, and, and how are you you're going to do that becomes a part of your delivery, but the material is, is what are you going to say to the audience? Now, main points need wrappers. And so the theme needs an introduction And it needs a conclusion. That makes sense. So you could say, I've got now an introduction which tells you, tells the audience what you're going to tell them. You tell them what you're going to tell them. The main points is you tell them. And then the conclusion is now you tell them what you told them. <laughs> That makes sense. So your introduction is tell them what you're going to tell them. Your conclusion is telling them what you told them. But of course the introduction and conclusion have to also do some other things. They have to interest the audience in your subject. Because without gaining their interest, how are you ever going to get connect with them as an audience? And in fact, if you can't connect with them, then there's little point in actually doing a presentation, isn't there? If you can't connect with your audience in some way. So your introduction is not only going to have to introduce what you're going to tell them, but is also going to have to connect to the audience in some way. It's going to be something in part of the delivery, isn't it? It's going to have to connect to the audience in some way so that you can share with the audience and they feel involved in the discussion. They feel 
like they want to know you know they're sitting there they're using their time they've got to have some reason for sitting there and they obviously feel motivated to sit there for the moment and what you need to do is hold them there for that time you know, through your delivery and the material itself and the introduction should do that for you and the conclusion um, should not only now tell them what you told them but it should also tell them the significance of what you told them in their life in other words it should motivate them to action it should motivate them to do something to feel something to to act in a certain way or to to make some change in a certain way otherwise there's little point in giving the discussion the presentation to the audience does that make sense so imagine you had a like a five minute talk so let's say the time allotted to you is five minutes can you see that if it's only five minutes you can see that if this is main point one one minute main point two one minute main point three one minute that leaves you for one minute with your introduction and one minute with your conclusion or you could do it a little bit differently couldn't you have half a minute for your intro half a minute for your conclusion and one and a third minutes for each of your main points but you can see that if you present too much material in one main point and you take three minutes you've got no time left to do your other main points and you've also got nine t no time left to do your conclusion which will motivate them to action so you can you can you see that timing inside of your talk is going to be very important what time you have allocated and how you're going to use that time so we've asked you to do a 10 minute talk so rub that out put in there 10 minutes can you see if we have an introduction of about a minute or a minute and a half and conclusion about a minute a minute and a half that's three minutes gone now we've got if we've got three main points that leaves us two to two and a bit minutes per main point that's all we got can you see now if I turn that into a four-hour talk I could spend 10 minutes on my introduction 10 minutes on my conclusion there's 20 minutes gone and then I could divide my main points into an hour each and I'd still have time left over So once you understand this basic principle of knowledge about your material and have knowledge internally about your material, all you'll need is, in your head even, is that in order to present material. That's all you'll need. What you're going, how you're going to introduce the material, how you're going to conclude the material, and what main points do you want to raise with your audience. That's it. That's all you've got to do. So when I speak for four hours, that's all I do. I don't, have, I don't write it down, even. But initially you might, but I don't even do that anymore. All I do is uh, think about the main points I want to raise in my talk with them on that subject, and off it goes. But I've got a very clear idea how I want to conclude it, generally, and a very clear idea how I'd like to introduce it, and a very clear idea what my theme is, so that the people have a reason for being there yep. any questions so far about the material Courtney if we use the mic because what what happens is the guys are able to record that even though you can't hear it um, you said that um, you used to, maybe you used to write it down or a person might write it down at the beginning but you don't anymore yep so what was that shift and was that just getting more well, accustomed to it after writing it down for a while? The more emotionally connected you are, Courtney, and the less fear you have, the more things flow naturally out mm -hmm. of you. And so you get to a point where you can have inspiration and your own ideas mixed together in a delivery where you're not worried about what the people are thinking of you and you're not worried about how they're responding you're not worried about their looks on their face and all those other things and so you don't get put off you you you've focused on the material and the delivery of the material mm. so so i haven't actually prepared this talk 
with you. All right? Now, you could tell that from the beginning when, when it comes to <laughs> addressing all the sound issues. That was the area that I wanted to prepare. That was the bit I spent my work on, but not on the talk itself. I know the material or the subject matter enough to know what my main points are going to be and how I'm going to deliver them to you. Does that make sense? Mm. But when you begin, you will probably want maybe one card where you've got your main points that just trigger your memory. The problem is, is when we get nervous and when we get sort of uptight, now we forget things. Now we start to worry. When you start to worry, that's when you get yourself in a bit of a muddle. They say that public speaking is actually the most... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? The most stressful thing other than death to deal with. It's more, it's more stressful than any other thing, more even than getting married and other things like that. It's more stressful than any other thing other than a person in your family dying. That's how most people view public speaking. So that's interesting, isn't it? There's so much fear about it. But, but that's because of the internal emotional injuries that exist with regard to interaction with people, worried about what people think of us and all those kind of things. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yep, any other questions right, about the material? So you can see with the material that we've given you, we've given you, I think it was five Bible verses, wasn't it? Six or something? Now, you can, uh, obviously it's going to be difficult for you to use six Bible verses, isn't it? Given the fact that some of those Bible verses you could just make one the key the part to one of your discussion, couldn't you? And just have th three main points about it. The reason why we gave you six Bible verses uh, was that we wanted to give you some flexibility as to what you were going to come up with in terms of your discussion. Right. But you can see that you're going to, from those verses, you're going to have to think about, okay, what do I want to present? What is it I'm interested in presenting? And what are my main points? And how am I going to get the audience's attention and keep their, and keep their attention? And how am I going to motivate them at the end to consider what I've discussed? That's my main material side of, of my presentation. And it's got to have some logical flow, doesn't it? So there's got to be some logic in it. But obviously, the other thing that it's got to do, uh, besides pr having a logical flow, is also have some um, emotional connection as well, doesn't it? So you could say it's got to also have some leeway for emotional connection as well. So you, you don't want to select material and that's really dull and boring unless that material has been selected for you. <laughs> and, you know, and sometimes that is the case when you've got to give a talk and uh, you know, if you're work, at work or something and they want you to talk about you know, the next greatest thing in accounts management or something and something that <laughs> may bore you to tears now, but that's the way it goes. And, uh, and so that becomes your subject. You've obviously got to then make it, how, how are you going to make that quite interesting? You're going to have to probably come up with some, you know, humorous anecdotes or other things. But of course, anything that detracts from your material is going to cause you trouble, right? So, so you're going to have to be very careful how you use those things. And this is what we want to talk about inside of your audience considerations and the delivery itself. Because you don't want to have examples or, or things that are about delivery that finish up overcoming the understanding of the material. So when a person walks away, all they remember was that great joke you told them halfway through. <laughs> you know what I mean? Rather than remembering the main theme of your discussion. So a good idea, a good concept is to, is to come away from the audience asking yourself, if I had to ask the people what the theme of that discussion was, would they know? All right. So this comes down to questions about my delivery, doesn't it? Like what, what questions do I need to ask myself about my delivery? So that's the questions about my material, all addressed. Now what are the questions about my delivery? Now you can see delivery is very important, isn't it? Otherwise you, you won't be able to maintain a connection with your audience. But you've got to be very careful that your delivery doesn't finish up overcoming the material so much that in the end they can't remember the material, they can only remember the 
how you delivered it. Right? So that's got to be, you've got to be able to make a balance there, don't you, between those two considerations. And of course, how you deliver it will depend a bit on your audience. So if you went along to a group of scientists and you started talking straight away about emotion, maybe that might be a bit difficult at the beginning. So you're going to have to deliver that in a scientific manner, aren't you, to connect with them individually. But if you go along to another audience, which is new age, new age type audience, and you're connecting, talking to them about God's laws, um, then you might have to connect with them in a different manner altogether. So you do have to consider your audience as well. So what we want to do now is examine how we're going to consider our audience and how we're going to consider our delivery but we'll focus our first thing on delivery because delivery is uh, is interesting in terms of what you've got what you need to consider first thing you need to consider is the volume at which you speak so if I talk real quietly and I just I mumble to myself and I look uh, not really engaged and uh, you know in the end of the day you're going to be pretty bored and probably feel pretty embarrassed for me right <laughs> isn't that right <laughs> but if i if i talk you know sort of in an outspoken manner where pe people don't have to struggle to hear me and my volume is is good and inside of volume you can see that there are a number of other things that you could consider which are called pitch pace and power so pitches you know when a person is a monotone speaker even if they are uh, good volume it's still pretty boring isn't it <laughs> but if a person is a it, it varies in their pitch in other words they go right down low and they go up high and they enthusiastic so we're obviously looking at some other personal aspects here of things like enthusiasm aren't we we need to have some kind of enthusiasm that allows us to if you're not enthusiastic about the subject how, how do you think <laughs> your audience is going to be like if you're not enthusiastic already and you're pretty bored of course they're going to be bored right <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the case and the reality is you can make almost any subject interesting <laughs> if you're enthusiastic and you've got good volume and a number of other things with your delivery so you've got volume obviously um, a, a part of volume is p and it, we need to also look at pausing which is all about a pace, isn't it? It's like, so pausing is a lot about uh, where do I where do I put my emphasis? Sometimes a good way to emphasise things is to have silence. <laughs> you see what happens as an audience when there's silence. It gives you time as an audience to think. And if you're presenting a, an interesting subject. That's what you want. Of course, if you're not presenting a very interesting subject, you might want to give them no time to think at all. <laughs> but that's obviously all a part of the delivery. Enthusiasm is a, is a very important part, but with regard to pitch, pace and power, there's, there's other considerations like modulation of your voice. How it goes up, how it goes down, how it, how it slows down, how it speeds up. What it is that you're trying to, how, how it is that you're delivering this will very much depend upon those things in terms of maintaining an interest in your audience. Yep. So that's still all about delivery. Then there's another thing which is like gestures. So that's like... If I stand there and I'm real rigid, which we often are when we're nervous, right? We, so you sort of, and you and you look very uncomfortable. What do you think the audience is going to feel after a while? They're going to start feeling uncomfortable for you. And and if you're speaking about a subject, a theme, that they are all they're feeling is uncomfortable for you. What what are they going to go away with the uh, main concept in their mind is going to be? How uncomfortable was that guy speaking? <laughs> How uncomfortable was he? <laughs> He shouldn't have been up there. Would what did he talk about? I can't remember. I was so worried about how comfortable he was. <laughs> and that's what happens when we 
uh, are not looser with with ourselves and so uh, it's good for us to move around a bit if we can like this is why these kind of mics are great because we can move around but if you st you know you've got a lectern in front of you with a speaker there then obviously you're not going to be able to move away from the microphone so that means you're going to have to use bodily gestures in one place isn't it with regard to you emphasizing things mm. Sort of like, you've got to be an Italian. <laughs> you know how the Italian speakers are. Blah, 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 and off they go. And, uh, and, and that gesture, you can see, you know, that they, you can see the feelings they have while they're speaking. And that's what you want to do for the audience. So you want to be able to see your feelings as a part of the interaction with the audience, you see. Is there any other things you can think of in terms of delivery that are in those kind of vein? of things Courtney what do you mean by power power is just all about like how much you hit things I suppose you could say so there are times when you increase your power which is your volume in terms of reeling really loud and, and, and getting boisterous and then there's other times when you go really quiet and pondering and there's a variation in power as well as pitch and pace. Mm. And if you combine those three things, you can see that it maintains an interest in the audience's ability to listen to you. Mm. Yep. Thanks, yeah. yeah. If we can, Ellie, Mike. Thanks, Catherine. Um, what about um, looking at the audience? Ah, yes, okay. So this is more in this audience phase, isn't it, which we'll talk about more. But part of your delivery is obviously engaging your audience, looking at your audience. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of theories about that as well. But you could call, you could call that some, some type of audience interaction. What, what would we name that, do you think? Is it, there is names for it. I can't just remember them off the top of my head. Um, Engagement? Or? Yeah, you could call it audience engagement or um, audience, um, your, your interest in the audience itself. So it's about looking at different members of the audience when you speak. See, a lot of people just go, they're looking down like this. How, what do you feel when I'm looking down like this? It feels like I'm more concerned about what I've got to say than I am concerned about you hearing it, doesn't it? But if I'm engaging you directly I, with I, eye contact, um, what, do you, what do you feel then? Now you feel like, oh, he's speaking to me now, don't you? So you have some kind of cons contact with that. You speak, you're getting spoken to directly. So it's a, a direct audience contact just by your sight. So you can actually, in a delivery, say nothing. and just look at people and they still will stay engaged with you but if you say nothing they just feel uncomfortable <laughs> Does that sense? but if you look at someone too long <laughs> or a certain way <laughs> obviously uh, they can also be uncomfortable so you would have to choose how that how that happens so can we call that the the eye contact with the audience so that, that's required isn't it yep Nikki and then Eloisa so like the use of a whiteboard or the use of outlines or okay. so what can we call bundle all that in as so like tools like yeah um, what kind of tools are they teaching tools well aren't they illustrations mm. And, and uh, you know, illustrations can take the form of your word-based illustrations, like you tell a story, mm. or it could take the form of you drawing something on the board, or it could take the form of a combination of those things, couldn't it? Mm. So those kind of things always maintain some kind of audience interest generally, don't they? And it helps the audience understand if you've got complicated subjects to discuss with them. Mm. And why does that work? Because it gives the audience another way they can understand the subject. Yes, and what so about. they're now using their sight yeah. as well as their hearing. 
And any time you can double up a sense, so if you could, if you could also add a smell and a taste, that would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> They'll learn something from that. But that's pretty hard to do sometimes when you're discussing like uh, how to how to put a car tire on a vehicle, uh, for example. You know, it might you know taste the rubber or something might go a bit astray. But so you need to you know see the limits of your material. But but it, if you can engage more than one sense, so you have got the sense of hearing, the sense of sight are your two primary learning senses, but your ta taste, smell, and touch, the, the rest of the five senses, if you could use all of them, then now we've got a great way to connect with our audience, haven't we? Right. So we want to have some kind of sensory um, shall we call it uh, inclusion? We're including more than one sense. Telling a story, still hearing. But it creates a visual imagery inside of the audience's head. So in a way, you could say that it also helps with the sense of sight, doesn't it? But, but if you're drawing a picture while you're talking, now you've got two senses being used. And if you're you know, smelling something while you're drawing a picture while you're talking, now you've got three senses used. And, there, and it is a well-known fact, actually, that the more senses you can use in the delivery, the more chances there are that your audience will remember what you delivered. Mm. But yeah, of course, you could go overboard with it, couldn't you? And, and also, if you've got 500 people as your audience, it's a bit hard to, you know, what do you do? You can't go smell that and <laughs> have everyone smell it, <laughs> can you? Very easily without you have some kind of thing that sprays it all over them or something. <laughs> it's very, very difficult there, so... Obviously, it depends on the situation as to how much you can use. And obviously, if you've got a big audience and you've only got a tiny little whiteboard, then obviously that's not going to be very effective, is it? Because most of the people are not going to see it and they're going to be more worried about seeing it than they are about hearing what you've got to say. And so you've got to also then think about how some of these things will affect your preparation for your talk. And we'll talk about preparation last even though it's probably the, one of the most important things to do. Any other things that you fit in here in delivery, do you think? I'm doing it now. What am I doing? Asking questions okay. or also rhetorical questions, so um, that can draw them in without having to have an answer. Right, so questions, whether they are rhetorical, in other words, not requiring an answer or you're not going to have an answer, or whether you have some kind of audience participation in the answer that keeps us a uh, keeps an audience engaged too doesn't it so that's handy of course you've got to remember that some people get your you know you ask the audience a question and somebody will answer it completely off topic and what do you do then you've got to somehow bring it on topic so you've got to be prepared for those kind of things where and you also need to be prepared to say no i can't agree or <laughs> You've got to be more prepared to say those kind of things when you ask questions and you involve your audience that way. But questions are a great way of involving your audience, aren't they? Engaging their, them in a process. Yep. Any other things you can think of? Thanks, Barb. Um, having your environment well worked out. Yeah, we will talk about preparation. That's about prep. So we'll talk about that. We're, this is just more about delivery. We'll talk about prep in a minute. Okay. Anything else you can think about on the delivery end? Uh, Eloisa? I think you really want to know, like, you know your subject. Uh, you've alluded to it the whole way through, but really, really know it. Yeah, so this is about your material. Yeah. Obviously, you do want to understand your material. It's no good going and going, well, I'm not sure about that or I'm not sure about this. Or, and, and, it's, and a general rule of thumb is to never discuss material that you don't know. <coughs> yep. No. I'm mixing a lot of these things together. Of course. So we want to combine all these things, don't we, in our presentation? Yep. Anything else? So anything else that's separate to these things that you can think of? Mary had a hand up in the back booth. You're all right. <laughs> huh? 
Well, when you uh, allow yourself to give it good consideration, you might come up with other things in amongst a delivery that would actually actually help the delivery. And uh, quite often there are other things you can do to assist the delivery. When it comes to things like aids, visual aids, which, are, which is a part of this sensory inclusion process, you need to take a lot of care, don't you, that those visual aids are actually assisting and not distracting from the theme and the main points of your material. You also need to take a lot of care that if you've got short amount of time to deliver the material in, that you don't get bogged down in a visual aid only to lose all your points. And uh, so the, there's a, you can see there's a balance required. Obviously, many of these things here can be done without affecting the timing of your discussion. Is that not true? But some of the things there are definitely going to affect the timing of your discussion. For instance, questions, particularly questions that are not rhetorical, that involve an audience, definitely going to finish up taking time, isn't it? And some of the sensory inclusion can take some time too, if you're not careful. You've got to be choose very carefully, particularly when you've got a short amount of time. Right. But other things there, modulation, enthusiasm, the pitch, pace and power, the use of volume and pausing appropriately, gestures and all those other things, eye contact, your enthusiasm, the modulation of your voice, all of those things can be changed at any time without it taking any time. So that, that's why they have great tools to use to maintain interest. Lena? It might be part of the, uh, depending on the type of the audience, so figure out, figuring out the type of delivery depending on what the subject is and where would it take place, in the auditorium or some kind of another yeah. style of delivery. So let's look a bit more at this audience side because that all comes under the audience. So what you're basically suggesting, one of the things to consider, is the location of where the audience is makes a difference, doesn't it? What other things make a difference about the audience? Because there's quite a number of things. So go back, Lena. There's a number of things there that we need to consider. That's just observing you. So um, it's got to be comfortable for the audience to so understand. So the level of comfort, yes. It's no good doing a two-hour talk when everybody's really uncomfortable, can't even sit down. They're all standing, isn't it? And that's it? including the temperature um, in the room, sound, so or distraction. So you could call that in the environment needs to be? Correct environment considered yeah yep. what distractions there might be and so forth yeah um interest perhaps what um uh what is the common interest of okay, the okay so we need to examine our potential audience and consider their interests and their experience or what we might feel their experiences so for example if you're talking to a group of 15 year olds about marriage then i would say their experience in marriage is very low probably aside from what they've observed from their own mum and dad which still might make it very low and uh, and so you know they don't have much personal experience so that you're going to have to give a lot of illustration about their observation rather than their personal experience but if you're talking to a group of 40 year olds who've been through one divorce and they've come to your course to help you not go through another now you've got a lot of experience that you know the audience has that you can draw from with helping them with, with their marriage. Does that make sense? Yeah. So would part of understanding your audience, because you may have a very mixed crowd that would dictate how, what kind of delivery you will give and what kind of material you will mix into it. Of course To it cover yes. everybody's un level of understanding on yes. the subjects you want to talk about. Yes. And that way, the illustrations and other sensory perhaps can be used to aid that process to reach out to different types of audience. Correct. Yep, that's right. So you can see the audience and how you connect with the audience. So this is all about get, having a connection with them, isn't it, of some kind. Now here we're doing as much as we can to have a connection with regard to the delivery, but we've also got to consider a number of other factors before a connection can actually be maintained with the audience, don't we? And these, uh, what level of interest they have, are they comfortable, are they standing or are they sitting? If they're standing, then a couple of minutes and that's going to be it. If they're sitting, you might get away with longer period of time. Uh, but it's very hard for a person to stand 
for a few more than a few minutes and actually hear what you're saying. Yeah. Somehow our ears are connected to our bottom. <laughs> so they, you know, when we sit down, our ear turns on, we stand up, the ear turns on. So ear and rear, <laughs> ear and rear <laughs> have obviously also an effect on how a person goes about listening to what you've got to say to them. Mm. Yep, Lena? And then Nikki on this side. I also observe you guys consider an um, audience who may be like troubling, so kids and other, so really uh, so. planning out the not only the venue, but this kind of extra things that can distract other people from the delivery. Yes, so you want to look at potential distractions, which also include how you're going to handle a belligerent person in the audience, for example. Someone, you know, sometimes you get some people with spirit influence in particular, and they might start yelling out things at you. What do you do then? How much do you engage that? You know, these are considerations that you need to make. Obviously, can you see again, the more relaxed you are and the more you're connected to your material, and the more you believe in your material and the more firm you are about your own connection with that, the, can you see the easier it's going to be to maintain, you know, what I would classify as the, the level of love in the environment is really what we consider. So you can, what, when we look at an environment, we're looking at the level of love that exists in the environment. How and what can we do to improve the level of love? And then what we need to do with the audience to ensure that level of love is maintained. Yep. Um, it's kind of going off from that one, but I was going to talk about um, like the potential injuries you can feel in the audience and also your own, in the sense of if you're being humble to your own and probably feeling about what attractions are going to come to you based on the audience who turn up. Yep and considering that as well in in your talk so how you could make some major mistakes here though couldn't you what kind of major mistakes do you think you could make not feeling the audience accurately not feeling your, your own stuff accurately yes but you could get too tied up in your own feelings couldn't you yeah if you do that then that's sort of being selfish isn't it? a bit narcissistic and that's going to have an effect on whether the audience listens to you isn't it you can also see that it, you, if you make it all about you, that's also, and not the material, now you've lost the point of the whole delivery, really, haven't you? So it will become a selfish action rather than a giving, you know, not giving of yourself anymore. So there's a whole heap of things in here that you need to consider about how do you love your audience? Now, you can still love yourself without sort of either, you know, or man, maintain, but maintain your own humility, can't you? So even if you get attacked, you still keep going. You've got to remember, if it might only be one or two of the audiences attacking you, the rest of the audiences might want to hear what you've got to say still. So you don't just throw your hands up in the air and walk out just because one or two people are upset with you. If a whole audience is upset, then obviously you walk out. But if, uh, if, a, if the percentage of people uh, is up, upset are very low, then really what you want to try to do is get them to either stop or walk out themselves, you know, address the issue of love with them. But you've got to know the issue of love before you can address it. Yep. Yep. Corny? I'm just to give them direction. So it might be a location that people have never been to before, so let them know where the services are, toilets are, when they're going to go, so not interrupting your talk, um, how to use the mics if you're using mics, stuff like that. So sort of like, it uh, depends on the length again of your talk, doesn't mm. it? But if you were doing a talk that was quite long, of course that would make sense to include a housekeeping section, if you like, of what, yeah. what we, where to go to eat, drink, and where to go to the toilet and so forth, and how to do those particular things, certainly. But if you've only got a five-minute talk, probably don't want to do that, and they probably already know that, given the fact that other people probably have spoken before you and so forth. Lena? Would it be under the same um, category here to consider um, potential audience? So outside of people who attend to your um, presentation, would you consider a extended, like you guys extend your presentations to anybody? 
Yes, so we consider spirits and people who are also going to be observing it on a video rather than people who are just at the yeah. audience itself live. But, but usually when you do public presentations, really most of the time it's not recorded. And a lot of times the spirit's not very interested in the subject. <laughs> So really, it's only your current audience that you're prepare, presenting for. But of course, the more you present about God's truth, the more it is that there are far more people interested in your subject, particularly spirits. And also, there'll be people perhaps who are on video, you know, that you'll see later, who, 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 who you're not, not seeing as a part of the audience right now, but you're considering them as a part of the process. And we, we do that a lot because we're con conscious of the fact that things are difficult to watch if there's a lot of problems with the delivery. Things become difficult to watch on a video that are okay to be present with live. And so you want to try to remove as much of the comings and goings live as you can so that the delivery on the video has some kind of continuity and presence. Mm. So they are all things you consider, because remember, for many of you, what, when you begin doing these things, your audience is actually, you're probably not even going to see your audience. So that's an interesting thing, like you're doing uh, some kind of presentation or a podcast or an interview where you don't know who's going to watch it. So, you, But you can still consider your audience by considering what type of questions people might have that are interested in that subject and what type of answers might they be looking for and what kind of life might they have led. So you still consider all of those kind of things, can't you, when you do the presentation. Okay. One thing that I'm really bad with, Stu, and I have to improve, is uh, on the delivery side is the diction. <laughs> all right. Obviously, if you're English or something, you might find your diction a lot more accurate. But Australians are very used to speaking, uh, dropping a lot of things, uh, words, and also using a lot of slang, I suppose you could call it. And oftentimes, that can limit your audience if you're not careful. Okay, so now we've got the considerations of a lot of things there, haven't we, with regard to our talks, quite a lot involved. You can see, if we go back to what we've looked at so far, which is, what am I now doing? Right, a conclusion. Am I doing a conclusion? No, I'm doing a repetition for emphasis. That's right, so I'm emphasizing. I'm just using repetition. Uh, rep is it repetition? I think so. But I'm using repetition. So uh, why do I use repetition? So that you remember what we discussed. Now, what did we discuss? Firstly, we've looked at the material, and the main points that we covered there were we need to have a theme, which is what people are going to go home with. We need to have an introduction to draw them into that theme, some main points about the theme, and a conclusion related to the theme. You can see that you don't want your conclusion really long or your introduction really long because otherwise you have no time <laughs> to do the actual delivery. So what I see a lot of people do is they rave on at their introduction, rave on in their introduction, and then they look at their time and say, oh, I've used all my time, and they haven't even had a talk yet. Right? So you've got to be very careful that your illustrations that you use in your introduction and the way that you gather the audience's attention is not chewing up all of your time, and then you left no time to deliver anything. Right. So that's the material. You've got to take care with your material. And a primary consideration of material is timing, obviously. You need to look at the time you have for delivery. But of course, if you have what's called, and by the way, there's a name given to this, and I need to tell you what it is. This, there's a name given to that, and that's called an outline. The beauty of outlines is you can put in extra detail or take out extra detail and it doesn't change the theme or your main points. Right. And that's really handy, isn't it? Now this applies whether you're just educating someone as well, training them in a certain area, doesn't it? All of this, the same thing applies 
you really need a theme, your main points. What are you going to discuss? Why is it why is it important they have that training? Remember with the training that Lena and Igor have given you over the last month, um, we, one of the things I raised with them is you've got to help them understand why they need to know these things. Right? What benefit it's going to have if they know these things. You see? So that's a part of the introduction to the material, isn't it? So with a training program, if you've got a training program, the very first few hours of your training program may be the introduction, and that introduction grabs the interest of the person so that they are motivated to continue on with the training program and they see the benefits of doing that. So that, your outline, is related to your material. You've got to understand your material has to fit in a certain time. And if... You know, there's nothing worse than going over time, particularly if people have been told the time. That's that's really bad, because they start looking at their watch then, they start fidgeting, and they start, they're already gone. And you're still talking, they've already left the building. So timing is a key part too. If you tell them it's going to take 10 minutes, then take 10 minutes. If the, if the whole audience agrees they want to have you take another 10 minutes, then take another 10 minutes. <laughs> Do you see? Like, so it'd be flexible, yeah. but at the end of the day, if they've if you've got a specific time, and of course, if you do radio interviews or television, there's a, there's only a certain amount of time. So there's only a certain amount of things that you can actually do, isn't there? Right, in that time, so you've got to choose, pick and choose your subjects, and you've got to not be necessarily misled on a subject that you feel is very unimportant under those circumstances. So that's all a part of the material and the choice of material. Then we've looked at delivery. When you see delivery is all about how you do it in the moment. Now, of course, these things in delivery can become practiced, but it's far better if you deal with the emotional reasons why you're not doing those things normally or naturally. Delivery that is practiced often will finish up sounding practiced and therefore less engaging. Whereas a delivery that's not practiced but automatically in includes these particular things, people feel engaged with, like they're just having conversation, even though they're not speaking, they're a member of the audience. Right? So the delivery has a big impact on how the person receives the material in the moment, doesn't it? How they respond to the material in that moment. And then the consideration of the audience is very important too because we've got to meet the audience where they're at and we've got to ensure that all of the environmental settings are such that they're comfortable to stand there or sit there and listen to what you've got to say. Because if none of those things are true, then it's really pointless opening your mouth. Yeah.